Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. I am often asked to speak on the topic of growing your business without social media. One of the questions that I quite frequently get is, is it possible to create success without social media? My response is always, I believe it is. But people often look at me like I have two heads. Let me ask you, do you believe it's possible to create a successful business without social media? As a business coach for women, I frequently hear women say that they hate social media, but they have been convinced that they have to be on social media if they want to grow a business. Some of the reasons that women don't want to be on social media include the fact that it's very time consuming, it's expensive and cuts into the bottom line, especially if you're hiring someone to do your social media management. It is a trigger for doubt, an imposter syndrome instigator. It is pay to play. So sometimes it feels really impossible to get more followers or reach your soulmate clients. It can be tiring. And most women really want something simplified, something more powerful and more effective so that they can show up online as their authentic selves and attract their soulmate clients. And they find social media a distraction. Can you relate to any of those things? Have you had those same thoughts or experiences? I have, and that is why I took a sabbatical two years ago from social media to see what would happen. And good things happened. I actually stepped away and my mindset became so much more positive and I became so much more clear and confident in my business. If you have felt that way, then you know that social media can drag you down. And let's be honest, if social media is dragging you down, it's going to impact your work-life balance. When you feel overwhelmed or stressed by aspects in your business, that is going to carry over into your personal life. And you may be irritable with your partner. You may be irritable with your kids. And this happens, especially for moms, because we have so much weight on our shoulders anyway, right? We're taking care of all the details. So when we are impacted by what we're doing in our business and how we're spending our time and our energy and our resources, it can seep out into our personal life. And that is why I focus heavily on growing your business without social media, because I want my clients to have that work-life balance that empowers them to be the best mom they can possibly be. Now, is it possible to grow your business without being on social media altogether? I do think so. However, there are also ways that you can still have a presence on social media without being on social media 24 seven and having those negative experiences, experiencing the chaos of questioning whether or not you'll ever be successful as somebody else or the doubt or the distractions. I mean, you know the distractions. Every time you're on there, you see an ad for another course or another coach or another program that's going to solve all your problems and bring you all these clients and help you get to six-figure months and all of these things that make you go down this path of doubt and fear as to whether or not you're doing things right and you're ever going to achieve the success you want to achieve. Or if, if, you're attracting the right people. Like there's so many questions that come into play when we see all these things. So the purpose of today's podcast is to give you some strategies that you can actually implement very easily. You can adopt them and see what happens. Do you get more peace of mind when you step away from social media? You still have a presence there. You're implementing strategies that will work for you and you can spend your time doing other things that are going to generate more profitability in your business. The reality is that 
social media has become a pay to play game. So if you're not paying, and even if you are paying, depending on how much you're paying and what your business is and how many followers you have, you may still not reach your ideal clients. So it's really important to factor in, how can I use these platforms to my benefit without having to invest a ton of money or spend a lot of time that is going to ultimately have a negative impact on me, my mindset, my family, or my business? All right, so number one, let's focus on Instagram. You can beef up your bio, include key phrases that you're using as SEO on your website, and make sure it is absolutely obvious what you do and who you serve. If someone lands on your profile, there should not be a single question as to what you do and who you help or how you do it. Remember that good copy will attract and repel. When you have a bio that is efficient, it's going to end up saving you time, energy, and money later on because you won't waste your time talking to people or attracting people that are not your soulmate clients, that are prospects, but not the right prospects. Create a robust grid that tells your story, that tells the story of your personal brand and your business. Think of those top nine squares that people are going to see when they go to your profile. These should include facts about you, your personal brand, your business, and your services. Provide value and inspiration. Grab attention. The top three posts can actually be pinned so they stay there. They're permanent at the top, which is a great way to include calls to action. Where do you want your people to go once they've landed on your profile to learn more, to be able to add them to your community, to be able to nurture them so that they become clients? Think about your email marketing. Drive people to your email list. And how do you do that? In that one of those top three posts that are pinned at the top of your grid, include your lead magnet. And then if you have a specific offer, maybe an online course, maybe a recurring masterclass, maybe a podcast, maybe a book, what are the other things that you can pin to the top that are going to grab attention and get people into your world, into your community, off of social media? So in your bio, you have an opportunity to include five links. Those links should include where you want to have your people go. What are those calls to action? Have a link so that they can easily take action and get on your email list or listen to your podcast or read your blog post or join a master class. Whatever those things are, those five links should be in your bio. Now, a lot of people you will see have Linktree or other platforms that have multiple links here are my thoughts on that. If I am going to drive traffic anywhere, I want it to be to my website or to my email list because those are platforms that I own. And if they go to my website, they're going to number one, learn more about me. But number two, Google is going to see that as a positive because people are coming to my site. So it's going to help my rankings. So anytime you can direct traffic directly to your website, do so. And I think it's much easier if they click those on the link in your bio and you have those five links there, that's opportunity to make it easy for people to take action versus having to go to a link, then go to other links and go through a list of links that aren't even on your platform. So I personally believe that we want to drive traffic to our website. So let's put the link to our website and let's put the link to our lead magnets right there in the bio. All right, let's move to Facebook. Now, on Facebook, you have a personal page and you have a business page. And you have to have a personal page to have a business page. So you have both. On both, you have banners. And it's so easy in Canva to create a Facebook banner. On that banner, have a call to action. What do you want people to do? 
And this is kind of cool because on your personal page, when you update that picture, all these people that are on your personal page are going to now see this update. And so you have an opportunity to get the attention of people who maybe don't realize what your business is or what you're doing now or how you've shifted or the lead magnets that you have, those free things, those free resources that you have to offer people include everything necessary. And I don't mean clutter it up and have so much text that people can't read it quickly, but use a graphic. If you have a podcast, have the podcast graphic there. If you have a book, have your book, an image of your book there. Have a link to your free resources, a link to your website. So whatever the call to action is that you want people to do, what you want them to learn about you and your business, have those things on the banner. And the same thing goes for your for your professional page, your business page. On the banner, have a link to your website, have a link to the resources. Now, you can hyperlink these when you create a graphic in Canva. You can also, in the description of these banner images, have the link to your website or the link to your freebie. And when you do that, you're making it so easy for people to click through, to actually find you where you want them to find you, to go where you want them to go so that they are truly in your community and you are now able to build the no love and trust factor with them. LinkedIn is another platform with that customizable banner. Take advantage of this space. Anytime you have land, right? I think of it as land. It's an opportunity to build on. And this is free marketing. So use your banners on LinkedIn and Facebook to your advantage to drive traffic to your website and to your email list, those platforms that you own. You can also on Facebook post pins and have those on your business page pinned at the top. So if there is something specific like a free resource that you want people to, to know about and really capitalize on that landscape right there at the top of the profile, direct them to that freebie, have a beautiful graphic and the link to the freebie and off they go to get on your email list. So now you can nurture them and convert them to become your soulmate clients. Pinterest is another incredible platform. Pinterest is a search engine. So you have an opportunity in the bio to give all of the information about your business, right? To have those keywords, key phrases in the bio there so people understand what it is you do and who you serve. Make sure that you use those key phrases because it is a search engine. So you want to have those key phrases there that you're also using on your website so that you can really, um, that attraction tool for the right key phrases when people are looking specifically for what your niche is or what you do or who you serve. I have several episodes on Pinterest, so I will link those in the show notes. So if you go over to the blog post, the blog post is going to have a plethora of additional links for you. There will be links on everything we've talked about, but there will be links on, you know, to access those other episodes on Pinterest and how to really use Pinterest to your advantage to grow your business. But when you create your boards in Pinterest, and this is for a business account, when you create your boards, when you create your pins, you want to use key phrases that are aligned with your business. How do you want to be found? Do you want to be found as a business coach for women? Do you want to be found as a Christian business coach? Do you want to be found as a health and wellness coach? Do you want to be found as a fitness instructor? How do you want people to find you? What search terms are they searching for that you want to be ranked for? Include these phrases and words, terms on your boards, on your pins, so that Pinterest sees you as the person to send people to when people search for those terms. Now, I have mentioned several times email marketing, get people to your email list, capitalize on your email marketing. If you don't want to be on social media, if you don't want to be chained to social media, married to social media, adopt these strategies and you will drive traffic to your email list while not having to post content there all the time. When you grow your email list, you have constant accessibility to your community. You can email them at any time, at any from anywhere, right? You can email them 
valuable strategies. You can email them about updates in your personal life. You can email them about any type of update there is in your business to build the no love and trust factor. Here's the thing about email marketing. You own that list. And guess what? If people join your list because they want something free, but then they unsubscribe, that's okay. They weren't your soulmate people. They just need you time. And this is where having a very succinct bio, very clear, very strategic information on all of your profiles will help eliminate some of those people coming into your world that aren't really your soulmate people. So you start almost having a screening process, right? By having the right information, the right keywords and key phrases, the the right hooks and connection points with people so that they understand whether you're their person or not their person. And if people unsubscribe from your email list, it's okay. Listen, I had someone, this is really funny because in the back of my CRM, my client um, record management system, I can actually, which is click automations, by the way, which I love. And there is a link to that on my resource page, but there is, um, you know, I can track the behaviors of people, which no, 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 I'm not doing this. It's not creepy at all. But if somebody comes in and joins the email list, I can see what they, how they came in. Did they come in from a lead magnet? Did they come in from a summit that I spoke at? which is pretty cool because when we create those tags, then we can create specific identifying factors to then be able to communicate with people about specific topics later on. But here is my point in telling you all this is that there was a woman that had joined my list a while ago. She unsubscribed in March and lo and behold, she actually applied to be a client just this week. So even if someone unsubscribes now, they could still come back. So don't think that just because somebody unsubscribes from your email list, it's a catastrophe. It's okay. And here's why it's okay. Because you now have these strategies in place to continuously grow your email list as fast or faster than if people unsubscribing. So your rate of entry level into your business is going to be much higher and faster than the rate of people leaving capitalize on that email list. Use that to continuously stay front of mind for your people, for those people that are there because they already like you and they are developing trust with you to ultimately either refer you to someone else that they like and love and want to care for or hire you themselves. All right, friends, there is, if you are really interested in growing your business for sustainable success, there is the link in the show notes for a free ebook on the five crucial strategies to start and grow a sustainable business without social media. Here's the thing. When we grow the foundation first, when we build that solid foundation, we can create a sustainable business You're not ready to have an influx of hundreds of clients until you have the foundation built, until your messaging is clear, until your processes have been implemented, until your website has been established. All of these foundational pieces are super key for sustainable success. So I encourage you to go download that ebook. Friends, That's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for being here. If you found this information helpful, will you please leave a rating and review for the show? That is how we continue to grow, be able to get good guests on the show and continue to reach more people. Let's face it, nobody's meant to build their business alone. And if we can provide additional support just by the means of the podcast, we're doing everybody a favor. So if you would, please leave us a rating and review and share this episode with friends or colleagues who you know are frustrated with social media and would like a little inspiration to be able to move forward without it. Until next time, and that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time, so I truly appreciate you joining me. And be sure and visit the website, therobingraham.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success.